Wife, 44 female, cheated, I, 45 male, filed for divorce when I found out, and she tried to kill herself on New Year's Eve. So, where do I begin? The STBXW and I have been together for nearly 25 years, 22 of which we were married. There had been no infidelities or major difficulties prior to this. We have four children, a set of 20-year-old twins, boy and girl, a 19-year-old son, and a 15-year-old daughter. I filed for divorce in mid-December and ordered her to leave our house and return to her parents. I received a number of phone messages, emails, and even handwritten letters from her apologizing for what she'd done, but I never responded in any way. She tried suicide when it finally dawned on her that I was really going through this and that there was nothing she could do to stop it. She would have perished if her parents had not remained at home to keep an eye on her. According to what I've heard, she attempted an overdose on pills, but no one knows where she obtained them in the first place. Her adultery seemed to have just lately been totally physical, late November or early December, although she had been emotionally unfaithful for at least a few months before. I'm not interested in finding out how long since it won't benefit me in any way since it was a married guy with whom she had the affair, I'd contacted his wife, so he's being divorced too. Add to that the fact that they're co-workers, which is how they met in the first place, and I'm guessing they started the affair during work hours. If you're wondering, how did you find out? The answer is I didn't. Our twin son and daughter did. They observed their mother kissing with the other guy in public. The location in issue isn't one that any of us would normally walk through and proceeded to notify me. I began exploring and discovered more than enough proof of a long-term affair. I don't have many deal-breakers and feel that marriage is an ongoing work in progress. You have to do your share to keep it going. But cheating is something I would never ignore or tolerate. Cheating is a slap in the face of all the time you've spent together, a slap in the face to your shared life. It boils down to greed and brutality. I'm simply telling you so you can have a better understanding of what I'm saying. Maybe, but that's a far-fetched maybe. I could have attempted to get beyond it if it had been a one-time occurrence, and she had immediately come to me, repentant and regretful. She wasn't though, I mean, she just began wailing and bawling after she was apprehended, and that is completely meaningless to me. It's easy to weep when your trash is exposed, but what about before all of this? I've never observed anything apologetic or guilty about her. I just cannot live with such a person. When I informed the kids I was planning to divorce their mother, they were all supportive and understanding. Our youngest sobbed more than I did, but she assured me that I was doing in the best interests of all of us. She could ask if she could live with me, the other three having their own homes of their own will, and I assured her she didn't have to. I believe that having the kids there has been the nicest thing in this scenario overall, demonstrating to me that all of those years spent with my wife were not in vain. Whatever she's like today, I can at least be thankful for our children. I adore them more than anything else. Unfortunately, almost everyone we know, with the exception of individuals who were my friends before they were family members, is attempting to get me to call off the divorce and speak to her, go to therapy, or some other foolishness, especially after the suicide attempt. Needless to say, all of those folks are on my, and I've stopped communicating with them in any way. Unfortunately, this includes my in-laws, whom I adored before anything occurred since I'm an orphan myself, and considered them as the family I never had. They attempted to contact me via their grandchildren, which has soured their plans to see their grandparents in the near future. The kids tell me they adore them, but they can't be around them right now because they're so domineering. They've also opted to remove themselves from their mother but they're definitely still in contact. I'm in treatment myself, going through some counseling because I don't feel anything for what's occurred. When I think back on how I found out about all of this, I notice a lack of wrath and pain. My therapist believes I numb myself on purpose to assist me get through this. I'm not sure. Prior to all of this, if you asked me how I felt about my marriage and wife, I'd probably tell you I was as happy as I could be, with a huge grin on my face. Now, nothing. You might have informed me the weather prediction for the day when I learned about the suicide attempt. I didn't have any feelings. Personally, I don't think so. In a sense, I was outraged for what this might have done to our children, but her attempting suicide doesn't elicit a feeling from me. I'm not thrilled that she's recognized how badly she's damaged our lives, but I also don't feel any pity for her. I'm afraid not. It's only that when I look at the circumstance, I think yes, as well as, what does it have to do with meth that's not how I am? Or, at the very least, I don't believe I was like that before to all of this. And my therapist tells me that the numbness will pass, 
that it is a normal part of the healing process. Yet here we are, more than a month later, and I still have no feelings about what occurred. I'm not sure whether that's a good or negative thing. I guess I'll simply have to wait and see. In terms of the rest of my life, the people who have remained loyal to me are not allowing me to spend much time alone. They realize that I need time to myself now and again, but they don't want me to be alone for too long. Everything feels so different today. You know, now, my greatest worry is for our children. For the time being, they are maintaining their distance from her their own will. I didn't poison them against their mother or anything they just don't want to speak to her. Our youngest has been the most affected by her mother's adultery, and I've been considering having her visit a therapist as well, if we can't settle this on our own. That our children responded so harshly to their mother's adultery is what truly disturbs me about the entire situation. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't relieved that they did respond adversely to it, since it shows that they realize that adultery is no laughing matter and that it can ruin marriages and families, as it has for us. But I'm concerned about the long term. Will they be able to move on from this? Will they ever have a physical bond with their mother? Will they recover? If any of you have been in a scenario similar to ours, please share your thoughts. Story 2. Do you think my wife cheated? Hello and welcome to everyone. I'm well known on Reddit and honestly, the thought of making this post makes my stomach churn but I'm looking for comments. Here's my tale. So I just resigned from my well-paying career in order to spend more time with my wife and children. With effect for next month, I'll be working for a reduced pay. The fact that my wife pushed me to do this further contributed to my belief that this was the finest chance. I'm a single mother of two children who has been out of work for a few of weeks. Our minor disagreement last night was about the fact that we were not spending enough time together while taking advantage of our time off from work. Even though it wasn't a major disagreement, she got in her vehicle and drove away at 10.30 p.m. that night. At the time, I didn't think much of it. I assumed it was more of a distressing session she needed, which is entirely understandable. Three hours later, she arrived at her residence. Fast forward to this morning, we didn't say much, but before she went for work, I told her that we shouldn't argue and that I cherished her. She didn't have anything to say, and it was almost as if she wasn't really there at all. When I requested for a kiss, she essentially pecked my cheek and walked away. For some reason, I felt a sinking sensation in the pit of my stomach, since this had never occurred before. She just updated her phones and is now using her old Android phone, which she keeps on her bedside. I felt bad for even contemplating glancing at her phone, but I decided to take a quick check over her Facebook messages to give myself some peace of mind. I immediately regretted my choice. It seems that she went out for drinks with one of her co-workers, who happens to be a male. After taking a look at the texts, this man begins to say inappropriate things to her. Example, you make me hard, you are gorgeous, and we are you, etc. She never even attempted to stop him. She seemed to be remorseful. This individual had been a source of contention in the past, but she informed me that she would speak with him and inform him of her marriage in order to convince him to cease. She clearly lied to me when she said that the situation had been resolved and that he had apologized. She also texted a photo of her to another co-worker whom she refers to as her hubby. In addition to debt kissing emojis, I need to get some feedback before she comes home from work. What do you think it is? I'm well aware that I'm not the most romantic guy on the planet, but I've been emotionally accessible, a hardworking provider, and an incredible husband and father to my family.